In this tutorial, we will learn how to estimate a chi-square test of independence using R. So with RStudio open, go to File, New File, R Script to open up our script editor here, which is our R Script file once we save it. So I'm going to make an annotation here at the top using the hashtag that this is a chi-square test of independence tutorial. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is set our working directory. And this is the folder in which our data are saved. And so the data that I've saved for this particular tutorial is going to be, if I use the setwd function to set my working directory fo um, folder, it's going to be my H drive and my R workshop folder here. So if I run that line of script there, I've set my working directory that's confirmed in the console. Alternatively, you could go to session, set working directory and choose directory. The next thing we need to do is read in the data. If you haven't done this before, make sure that you have installed the reader package because this is what we're going to use to read in the data. I've already installed the reader package recently, but if you haven't and you haven't installed it before or you need to update it, go ahead and click run. And I will next use the library function with the name of the reader package here in the parentheses, click run. And now I've accessed the reader package and now I'm ready to use the read underscore CSV function from the reader package. Let's go ahead and name this file here or the, rather this data frame object that we're about to read in. Let's just call it CST, okay, for a chi-square test, all lowercase. And we'll use that read underscore CSV function and we'll need to type in the exact name of the file that is located in our working directory folder. This one is called chi-square turnover.csv. I see I misspelled that right there, turnover. Okay, so it's chi-square turnover with a capital C, S, and T. Okay, let's go ahead and run that. And as you can see, we've now read in the data and assign the data to an object called CST. If we click on that in our global environment, see that there are three fields or variables here. First, we have the unique employee ID variable here. We're not going to be using that in this tutorial. What we're gonna focus on is the onboarding and the turnover variables here. So the first variable, which is onboarding, there's two different options, no or yes. No means that this person participated in the onboarding training. If you come down here, this person with yes means that they uh, did, did participate in the onboarding training. If you have no, it means they did not. And then with turnover, it's pretty self-explanatory. Either they have quit or stayed. So each of these two variables are categorical. That is the onboarding and turnover variables are both categorical and they each have two levels. Onboarding has the levels no and yes and turnover has the levels quit and stayed. And so for this reason, we can run a two by two chi-square test of independence to determine whether or not there is an association between these two categorical variables. Okay, so in terms of the statistical assumptions, I'll just make a couple notes here. The first one is that we need to make sure that the cases are randomly sampled from the population. This is a hard one to uh, meet in a lot of instances, but as much as we can feel justified that there's no that the, the cases were sampled independently of one another. In other words, that each case has about the same probability have, of having been included in the sample from the underlying population. Now, the next one is very important, and we need to think carefully about this, and that is that the non-occurrences are included. So what does that mean? Well, let's use this example of turnover here. If we, for instance, did not include the non-occurrences, that would mean that we only would include those people who quit, for instance. So we would focus on those people for which the event that we're interested in, turning over or quitting, we'd, if we only include the occurrences, we'd only include those people who quit. We need to make sure that we include the non-occurrences too, which would be those people who stayed. So make sure that you've thought carefully about that for whatever your variable is, um, or whatever your variables are that you are analyzing. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is let's create a contingency table. And sometimes this is called a cross tab, cross tabulation or cross tab. And 
these are very useful for examining data. It's just essentially a table here, but this is gonna serve as the basis for what we're going to use to run our chi-square test of independence. So the first thing that let's do let, that we should do is let's name this cross or this contingency table or cross tabs something. And so I'm gonna call this, this table object TBL for table. That's TBL all lowercase. We use a left-handed arrow here so that we can assign the um, the contingency table values to this object. So let's use the cross tabs function from Basar to do this. And so type in X tabs. And then the next thing that you're going to do is enter the tilde symbol, followed by each of the variables separated by a plus symbol. So the first variable, if you recall, is onboarding. The second one is called turnover. Make sure that you uh, recognize that these are case sensitive variables. So it should be onboarding with a capital O and turnover with a capital T. And then we'll do data equals as our next argument and the name of the data frame, which is CST from which both of these two variables come from. So if we go ahead and click run there, now you'll see that we have a table object here in our global environment. And if we were to double click and just run our table object here, you'll see that here it is. We get a two by two table here where we have onboarding no versus yes and turnover quit versus stayed. And we can begin to see um, how people, um, the proportion of people, or rather the raw number of people in this case, who did not participate in the onboarding and quit, which was 16. And then let's say those people who stayed in the organization and did participate in the onboarding, that's 46. And you can look at the other two crosses there as well. So how do we run the chi-square test? Well, we're going to use a function that is called the chi-sq.tst. So chi-square.test or chi-sq.test. And this is a function from base R. And then we're going to enter the name of the table object, which is TBL here. So that's going to be our sole argument here. Now let's go ahead and click run. And there you have it. We have run a Pearson's chi-squared test. And here what you'll see is we have our chi-squared value. So this is this is supposed to represent here the chi, the, the Greek letter chi. And so we this value isn't gonna to be too meaningful for us, which is 23.179. And we have the degrees of freedom here, which is simply, since we have just two variables that, um, or uh, rather since we're just comparing two variables here, we have a degrees of freedom of one. And then our p-value is going to be 1.476. And that might seem like it's very large, but note that this is scientific notation, which means that you have six places to the left where the decimal place is going to move. You can think about that in your mind. So this is actually a very small value. It's definitely less than, p, uh, less than 0.05 here. So here we would conclude that there is a statistically significant association between these two variables, onboarding and turnover. So these are two categorical variables and we do see a statistically significant association between the two of them here. Okay, now the next thing that we're going to do is let's go ahead and visualize our um, the proportions here. So previously we looked at up here, we just looked at the raw data, the raw numbers here for our contingency table to get a better idea of how to interpret this chi-square test, because here we just know that there is an association. To learn how to interpret it, we're going to do use a function that's called prop.table, proportion table in other words, from base R. And first, as the first argument, we'll enter the name of our table object here, our contingency table object, which is TBL. And then we're gonna put in the numeral two to say that we want to request column proportions here. If we had put in one here, we get row proportions. It doesn't really matter which way you do it. It'll just affect the way that you interpret it. Um, but you can come to the same conclusions. It's, you can play around with this and do it both ways if you'd like as well. So let's go ahead and run that and check it out in our output. And so here we get the proportions instead of the raw values. And so what you can see here is that approximately 70, if we're looking at the columns here, and so you'll see that each column, the values add up to one, okay? And so if we're looking at the columns, so if we're looking at those people who did the onboarding versus those who um, did not, so those people who did the onboarding is yes, those people who did not is no. 
in terms of, and then in relation to whether they quit, we'll see here that those people who did not participate in the onboarding had a higher proportion that quit than those people who did participate. Now let's come over to the next column here and let's look at the stayed column in relation to onboarding. And here we'll see somewhat the opposite. So those people who did participate in the onboarding, there's a very high proportion here of 0.867 that, um, that stayed versus those people who did not participate in the onboarding, um, only about 13% of them stayed here. Okay, so this gives us an idea and helps us understand how to interpret this. And so specifically what we could say here is that if you participated in the onboarding program, you're more likely to stay. And in other words, if you, if you did not participate in the onboarding program, you're more likely to quit. So this helps us interpret these two by two. Now a two by two chi-square test is going to be easier to interpret than um, when you get more complex types of chi-square tests, such as those that are, um, uh, such as if you had three by two or five by two or something like that. And so the way, the reason this is called two by two is because each, you have two variables. So if you think of this being a two by two, so you have two numerals here, each numeral represents a variable and then two represents the levels. Okay. So each one has two levels, no and yes, and quit and stayed. All right. So that is, what, um, that is the first step there. So now we've interpreted this and we understand that yes, there's an association. We understand how to interpret that association. And the next thing that we can do, and this is special to a two by two chi-square, and this also works with a one by four chi-square as well, but we're focusing on a two by two chi-square here. And that is that you can estimate a phi coefficient and a phi coefficient is going to be interpreted in the same way as a Pearson correlation. And this is useful because now this is an effect size metric. And so in order to, to estimate the fee coefficient, we need to access the psych package. And so we'll do install.packages and then psych is the name of the package. Make sure that's in quotations there. I've recently installed this, so I don't need to run this, but you may need to um, run this line here to install the psych package. What I will do is use the library function to access the functions within the site package by putting the site package name there and I'll click run here. Okay, so now I have access to the site package and I can use what is called the phi, P-H-I lowercase function from the site package. And all I need to do is enter the name of that contingency table object, which was TBL for us and click run. Okay, so here you can see this is the fee coefficient, it's 0.59. And so you can interpret this in the same way you would with a Pearson correlation. And if you remember, our rules of thumb are something like this, 0 0.10 for a Pearson correlation would be about small, 0 0.30 would be about medium. And typically if we're going by Cohen standards, 0 0.5 would be, about, would be about large here. And so this would be a large effect here that we see. So this is our practical significance value or effect size. Hey, we can also continue going if we want to further explore the data. This next part would be optional, but sometimes it's useful to do that. And that is to examine the observed and expected values, okay? Because this is what a chi-square test of independence is based on. It's comparing the data that you observed to what you would expect if the two or the variables that you're looking at were truly independent of one another. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, let's go ahead and create an object. I'm gonna call this just chi sq, all lowercase. Use the left-handed arrow so we can assign the values to it. And we're going to use that chi square test or chi sq dot test function from base R and just type in the name of your table object, the TBL that we did before, and we're going to assign this to this object here that we named, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and run that. Okay, so we've assigned it. So now we have a chi-square object here, and if you click on this, you can actually look at it here in your global environment, all right? So that's not gonna mean a whole lot to us, except when we start um, looking at specific components of it. 
And so the way that we can do this, let's say we want to look at the observed values, which this won't be too surprising for us. Well, we can take the exact name of this object we just created here, use the dollar sign, and then typed in, type in observed. Okay, this will reference and extract those values that are observed from this object here. So let's click run. Okay, as I mentioned, this is gonna look familiar. We already saw this at the very beginning. This is our contingency table or our cross, cross tabs or cross tabulation, whatever you wanna call it. If we wanna know those, the what the observed or the expected values are, we type in expected all lowercase here to extract those and look at that table. So let's click run there and look at that. Okay, here's what we would expect if these two variables, turnover and onboarding, were truly independent of each other. These are the expected proportions here, or the expected raw values rather. These are raw values here, and you'll notice that they're not whole, and this is because um, to make these truly independent, we had to go to some decimals here, and instead of using integers, we're using numeric values if you wanna think about this in terms of variable types in R. Okay, the other thing that we can do, easily extract, is R, rather the residuals. Okay, so if you just type in chi sq dollar sign residuals and click run these are our residuals these are specifically the pearson residuals and so i'll make a note of that here these are the pearson residuals and what this means is that the larger the value is the more influential this is going to be on our chi-square statistic itself our chi-squared value so here we can see that um, those people who did not participate in the onboarding and also quit, they have quite a bit of a pull on our, uh, or the largest pull and influence on our chi-squared value here. Sometimes it's helpful to look at this. We already, in this simple example of a two by two chi-square test of independence, it was relatively in, it, it, easy to interpret uh, the nature of the association between these two categorical variables, so we didn't necessarily need to go to this step, but sometimes it's useful to do this especially when you have more complex types of chi-square um, test of independence. Okay, so this wraps up the chi-square test of independence tutorial. So in this tutorial, we talked briefly about the statistical assumptions. We created a contingency table or cross tabulation. We then actually estimated the chi-square test of independence here, which in this case is a two by two. Because we have a two by two chi-square test of independence, we can calculate a fee coefficient, which is a special type of, it's a, an effect size that can be interpreted as a Pearson correlation. And thus we can use our standard correlation rules of thumb that are these that are highlighted here. And then we took an extra step that was optional, and I'll make a note here that this is optional, where we actually examined the observed and the expected values. And these are this is how the chi-square test is actually computed here. All right, so this wraps up the lecture, or the tutorial rather, on chi-square test of independence. Thank you.